I don't know if you realized, but it's September. It's officially the best time of the year. Any month that ends with burr is my favorite month. September, October, November. Me and Zeus are big fans of the fall. He's not good with the heat. I'm not good with the heat. However, summer does provide us a lot of opportunities to read. So we read a lot this summer. Instead of just doing an August wrap up, I figured why not go through and do a reading tag for the summer. So, so I went to YouTube and I looked up summer reading tags to see which ones I could do. And lo and behold, I found, not sure if I'm just like bad at looking um, because I feel like there is some out there, but I really couldn't find any. So I took my little strawberry notebook that I just bought, it's so cute, and I wrote a summer book tag and I'm going to share it with you and go over it today and we're gonna chit chat and talk about it and get ready to push the summer aside and start fall because I can't wait. So we have a collection of 15 questions we are going to go through. If you guys are interested in doing this, please tag me so I can watch it and I'm gonna put all of the ones that I see in a playlist on my channel. So without further ado, let's jump into the summer reading tag. This one isn't a question, but just an honorable mention. I'm so excited for this book. This is gifted to me by the Canterbury Classics team, and this is Classic Tales of Horror all the month of October. I will be reading one short story from this every night over on my TikTok and my Instagram. So if you would like to purchase this book, run it from your library, get the digital copy of it, and do this with me, um, I would love that. So make sure you're following me over on my other socials so we can do that together. I read a grand total of 22, which averages out to about seven books a month. So much better than last year. I was reading Akatar all summer and that took up truthfully most of my time. Um, so I'm very happy with 22. I had a whopping nine, which is almost 50% of the books I read. Is that right? All right, let's talk about the five stars that I have in no particular order. We have Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Moss, Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Moss, A Lady's Guide to Scandal by Sophie Irwin, The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang, Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau, A Lady's Guide to Fortune Hunting by Sophie Irwin, Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green, and Legendary by Stephanie Garber. I sadly did. I DNF'd three. The first one is Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. Her writing is just not for me. Um, I really liked The Love Hypothesis when I read it. Would I like it now? I don't know. I feel like it's a good introduction to romance, but I don't know if I really resonate with that style of writing anymore. Um, and the writing just wasn't for me. If you're into her style of writing, you'll love the book. The next one we DNF'd was Crescent City by Sarah J Maas. I'm very upset that I had to DNF this. I just don't think it was time yet, if that makes any sense. Crescent City is a very modern fantasy, so it's like fantasy elements in a modern setting, and I don't like that. <laughs> like, plain and simple, I just don't like that, um, and it's just... It's too long to waste time reading something that I don't enjoy. The last one that I DNF'd was The Only One Left by Riley Sager. I read this as an arc and I just could not get into the writing. It was my first Riley Sager that I read and I had such high expectations. The plot sounded good, the like setting of everything, it just sounded really good, but the writing style was just not my taste. If you read Riley Sager and you think there's another book that I would like better, please let me know because I am interested in trying his writing again. This one is Tender is the Flesh. I'm saving this for a little bit later into spooky season. This book is basically about cannibalism. It's this dystopian society where for whatever reason, animal meat is deemed poison and toxic for humans to consume. So we start consuming humans. And this follows Marco, our main character who works at a human processing plant. I hear that it's less like in the details of eating humans and more in like, the morality of it and stuff like that so i'm interested very nervous though 
did I read this book on the beach? No, I didn't. However, I wish I did. This is Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. I've talked about this one so many times on my channel, so I'll keep it brief. It's about a 14 year old girl who is living in the suburbs of Baltimore in the 70s. She comes from a very straight laced, strict white family and she is nannying for a rich white family also in the suburbs but like a neighborhood over the mom thinks it's going to be a perfect fit for her to make some money however the family is a complete 180 from her family and she's kind of tossed into this world of like talking about sex rock and roll drugs alcohol stuff like that she doesn't participate in it but it's discussed so openly and it's so different from her life that it's just like a very eye-opening summer for Mary Jane. All the characters are so unique and they all just feel so fleshed out and like the author truly loved writing them and I don't know it just felt like a warm hug like I just wish I read it on the beach it just felt comforting like a beach read it's fast-paced I loved it. going to have to go with Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Maas. This is the second book in the Throne of Glass series. Throne of Glass I gave five stars as well and I loved but for whatever reason the second book just packed a bigger punch. There was more cliffhangers, we got to learn more about the characters, a lot of tension built between the characters and there's a lot of like secrets and lies and complicated plot lines and it was just the perfect fantasy book truthfully um if you know of other fantasy books that feel like this book right here please comment them because i adored this for me this was the silent bride i listened to the audiobook on kindle unlimited and i finished it in a day which i never do however i did not enjoy the way the book panned out it is about this woman who is walking down the aisle the day of her wedding and she doesn't recognize her groom everybody around her is telling her that's your husband that's him they think she's having some sort of mental breakdown and she is certain that that is not her husband so the story kind of follows the aftermath of her figuring out what is wrong with her or what is wrong with everybody else that they think that this random man is the man that she was supposed to be marrying um it has a cool plot however i just i don't know felt a little bit predictable and i didn't like the ending that much but it was still a decent read i think i gave it like two and a half stars not terrible but i don't know i read it quick so for whatever that's worth This is going to have to be Sophie Irwin's books. This is A Lady's Guide to Scandal and A Lady's Guide to Fortune Hunting. I was sent both of these books by Penguin Random House and I'm not the biggest romance reader. I don't really post too much about romance books. I mainly focus on fantasies, literature fiction, and thrillers, stuff like that. So I was a little hesitant going into these. Um, I do like Regency era romances and I do love Jane Austen books and Jane Austen-esque books. So I, I thought I'd like it, but did I think I'd give them both five stars? No. Um, these are both five star reads for me. The characters are just 10 out of 10. The banter is 10 out of 10. If you like slow burns, Regency era romances are the slowest of burns and they are perfect. Like perfect like you know the hand scene in pride and prejudice like you know what i'm talking about that's how these books feel like it is just like the slowest burn the banter's so good and any book that sophie irwin writes from now on i will be purchasing immediately Did I read this in May? I think so, but I'm just still going to include it because I want to talk about her. So these are books by India Holton. She has written The Secret Service of Tea and Treason and The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels. I read this one. I didn't read this one yet, but I liked this so much that I went and bought this one. These are fantasy historical romances, which is a mouthful, um, and they are so fun. Like the writing is just unlike anything I've read before. It's about these witches that fly house and they're all like assassins and killers and they poison people and they all band together in this book to fight off a male pirate who is trying to take down the females and it's just so good like it's just so good the writing is funny and sarcastic and dry and like the humor is super dry and i loved it so if you're looking for something along the lines of that i highly recommend picking up anything by india holton i also believe she wrote the league of gentlewomen 
Witches. That's totally the wrong title, but she has a Halloween-ish book. So check that one out for the fall. I'm going to have to go with The Street. I had such high hopes going into this. This was another Kindle Unlimited read, and it was about this couple who moves into this very secluded and exclusive street in Scotland. They are told by a detective to keep to themselves and keep a very low profile, and we don't really know why. However, the first night they move in, they get drunk with their neighbors, which is basically the opposite of what they were supposed to do. The next morning, the wife goes next door to get Advil from the woman who lived next door who they drank with the night before, and she finds the house completely empty. She asks all the neighbors where her neighbor went, and everybody tells her and insists that nobody's lived there in a while. So it's kind of following that aftermath of that and figuring out what is going on with the street, what are these people hiding from her, stuff like that. The ending was super predictable and I felt like just like an easy way out and I don't know, I just didn't like the ending at all. I think I gave it one star. I was super mad at it because I felt like this could have been such a well fleshed out creepy thriller and it wasn't. Like it was kind of boring, sorry, it was. quite a few let me pull them up the first one we have is Kaylin Liston she does these long form YouTube videos and vlogs where she wraps up everything that she read for the week and it's so good her videos are like a warm hug they're super comfy and cozy and if you like chatty videos you'll love hers the next one we have is Salmonella is Bad. This is Ella and she does the coziest videos ever. Most of her videos are reading vlogs and they are just so much fun to watch. She has such a calming presence. So I would definitely check her out if that's what you're into. We also have Karen Tochterman who is the sweetest soul ever. She does the coolest content. It's all so aesthetically pleasing. She does great content throughout all her social medias, TikTok and Instagram. So definitely check her out. And the last channel I want to talk about is Michaela Wilson. She just recorded a 24 hour readathon and it has truly inspired me to try one for myself. I've never done one and they terrify me, but hers looked so fun that I think I have to. This is going to be the Caraval series by Stephanie Garber. There is a spin-off series about Jax, but I have not read that yet and we're not gonna count that. Um, but I did read Caraval, Legendary, and Finale, and I gave the series as a whole five stars. So good. It is like a fairy tale fantasy with magic, and it's just this game where people get invited to participate and the winner gets a wish granted, but the stakes are so high. Like people die, like it's serious, but it's so fun. I just love it. There's romance, tension, it's perfect. If you're looking for like a fantasy series that you can get through quick that's not like 8,000 books long, Caraval is perfect. I'm going to have to pick two. This is by Kathleen Glasgow and Liz Lawson. This is The Night in Question, the second book in the Agatha's series. So these books follow these two high school girls who are kind of foils of each other. They're complete opposites and they work together to solve murders in their coastal California seaside town. And it is just the best murder mystery. Like if you picture a book that you want to lay down by the window on a rainy day with like a mug of coffee, this is it. Like these are the books, they are so good. The authors work so well together. I can't tell who writes what, and I don't know. It just, it, it blends perfectly and they are so comfy. I loved this. Mine is going to be The Gracier. I've been hearing so much about this one. So this is like a dystopian YA thriller. It's this world where women are sent off on their 16th year to dispense of all of the magic in their systems so that they are purified and cleansed for their wedding. And some of them don't make it back alive. It's a very dangerous year. It's, it's compared to The Handmaid's Tale and it sounds just like that, honestly. I'm so excited for this. It seems like my kind of book. So, and I feel like this is actually pretty good for the fall. So I'm kind of glad I put it off. And that pretty much wraps up today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope that you make your own summer reading tag video. I would love to watch them and hear about how your summer of reading went. Um, now that that's done, let's push summer aside and fingers crossed that it gets cold soon.